welcome to Half the Battle. Let's talk about Bullhorn! Yeah, I... I don't have an actual Bullhorn, so this had to do. Bullhorn here was released in 1990, with all original body parts. 1990 was the last truly great year for G.I. Joe, before the gimmicks really started. And it shows here. This is a very nice looking figure with lots of neat details. My only point of criticism revolve around his camo. For some reason, it's only on his lower legs and face, making it, well, not all that useful. Also, it's brown, which, as we know, can look somewhat, um, unfortunate. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons I say 1990 is the last great year for G.I. Joe is the choice of accessories. Just one year later, we'd start getting crap like water guns and hugely oversized electronic backpacks. But this year was golden, and Bullhorn is a great example of this. Just look at all the accessories. This is a great little set. First off, he comes with a bullhorn. Well, of course he does, since he's called Bullhorn. He has to come with one. Keeping up the tradition of figures like Bazooka, who came with something resembling a bazooka. Or Laser Viper, who came with lasers. Or Skidmark, who... I, you know what, let's just forget about that one. The bullhorn actually comes in two pieces. And you gotta admit, one part looks a bit like a gun, doesn't it? Even if it's not meant to be one, you know kids use this thing as a surprise hidden gun to take out unsuspecting bad guys. It's a very cool piece, but I have to admit, where the hell is he supposed to talk into? I'm guessing it's one of those two pegs on top, but then again, why are there two? Moving on, he also comes with a cool gas mask. And it's doubly cool, as you can also use it on other figures. Like, for example, a custom figure to make a Cobra Viper wearing half his helmet. And this thing fits on plenty of heads for added value. Even better, it's made of soft plastic, so there's little to no danger of it damaging the heads of any figure you put it on. He also comes with a pretty nice-looking sniper rifle. Always good to see unique-looking guns. Next, there's the briefcase. Well, it's a briefcase that doubles as a backpack for some reason. Yeah, it doesn't even have a handle, you just plug it into his back. And it's really heavy and awkward, meaning you'll need a figure stand just so he can stand upright. I really would have preferred it if it had been an ordinary briefcase with a handle. Now let's find out what's in the briefcase. Yeah. Oh, it's a sniper rifle. I thought it would be somebody's soul or something. But hey, it's a second sniper rifle! Why the hell would this guy need two? It's not like they're good for dual wielding. But the second one does look awesome, though. And you have to assemble it! My only real problem with it is that G.I. Joe figures can't really move their arms enough to achieve a good sniper pose. Overall, I'd say this is a great figure, and the accessories add so much, making it awesome. Sadly, this was the only version of Bullhorn ever released. Well, technically I'm lying here. There was a second version sold at the G.I. Joe Collector's Convention of 2008. But I'm not really familiar with that one, or indeed most convention exclusives. But it's there if I like it and don't mind spending some extra cash to get it. Because convention figures tend to become expensive over time. So now, let's talk about his character. This guy is basically a walking contradiction. He's a negotiator and a sniper all rolled into one. He's an expert in talking down wackos and fanatics, but can also take decisive action using lethal firepower. You know, I don't think they let you do those two jobs at once. Don't do anything drastic! You've got so much to live for! 
Damn it! Come out and I promise you won't be hurt! Really? The file card goes on to say that everybody likes talking to Bullhorn. He's a calm guy and a good listener. It also says that he has the looks of a choir boy. Eh, I don't see it. On the other hand, he was a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor and an expert shot. Yeah, like I said, a weird combination of skills there. It's hinted that the other Joes enjoyed talking to him about their problems, so we act like the team shrink, I suppose. Heh, I bet that pisses off Psych out. You know, the team's actual psychiatrist. As far as the comics go, I couldn't find any appearances by him, so at best he may have appeared in one panel or something, but I've got nothing. He did show up in the D cartoon, and he was just, well, there. He really didn't do anything. The episode where he shows up focuses on three other Joes, not him. And here's where I get to go on a familiar rant again. They create this amazing character with a lot of potential for stories. In this case, a freaking hostage negotiator. And they barely use him, if at all. And there's a lot of potential there. I mean, the Joes have dealt with actual hostage situations in the comics. But unfortunately, this is yet another intriguing character whose potential has been completely wasted. I implore you, G.I. Joe fans, Put this guy in your dioramas! Comic book writers, use this guy in your issues! There are a lot of stories to tell here! My final conclusion, this is a good figure with great accessories and a nice backstory. He should definitely be part of your collection. He was tragically underused, and if I ever did a top 10 of underrated G.I. Joe characters, Bullhorn would definitely be near the top. See you next week, everybody! Lots and lots of people complain about the color orange, but do nothing about it. Well... That's not exactly true, I suppose. I'm the only one that complains about the color orange. And I do do something about it! Just take a look at Skidmark here. This orange is horrible, so let's get rid of it. And you can do this too. It's easy as just picking up some paint from a toy store and applying it to anything orange you see. Join me in making the world a less orange place!